Hello, hello. Hi. You have had a crazy couple days of press, performances, the whole lot. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. So you have a brand new album, like we just mentioned, coming out next month. That's October 27th, The Lonely, The Lonesome, and The Gone. How antsy are you <laughs> right now when you're talking about it a lot, you're previewing a little bit of a lot, but like getting it out the door, like how ready are you? Very ready. Well, it's been going on a long time, and when we started writing a long time ago for this record, so yeah, you're always anxious to get it out. Let's talk about maybe when those sessions and those writing sessions first began. Are you always writing? Are you always listening to songs? Or do you really set time aside and say, we're going to start the next collection now? Definitely did that this time. But, but, I mean, I'm always writing. I'm always hearing new songs. I don't even have to actually actively listen for songs. It's like, for, for me in particular, like, I'm always listening. I send songs to other people. I go, you should record this or, you know, things like that. So it's a process that never ends. My husband's in the business. He's a producer and a publisher. And so, oh, we have practically a revolving door of writers. The speakers and, are never off. <laughs> no, never, never. Was there one song in particular where you knew, like, you had found your <laughs> mission and your direction for this next batch of songs? Hmm. Well, All the Trouble that I heard just a minute ago, definitely in Hollywood, um, those are some, some of the early, early ones. You did a lot of writing on the road for this record, I know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested in how that works and what you get out of that. Is that just because time constraints you need to, or do you get something out of like sort of bouncing around? Well, yeah, it's time. Okay. Because if, if I have a day off or three days off or whatever on the road, I'm not going to waste that time. So well, I'll write when I'm That's out how there. you get a career this size, right? Don't waste time. <laughs> I like that. Um, but I know Hollywood did come out of maybe a couple days that you spent in Palm Springs. Uh -huh. Maybe you can tell me about that writing session or where that came from. Well, I love, I mean, I love the 60s and 70s, and I love the connection of, of um, Southern California country music, you know, at that time and everything. I grew up in Texas, but that's very, you know, West, Western too, you know, so... Um, I just, I, I like that time period, and we were out there in a house in Palm Springs, and I don't know, looking up at the mountains, and we just wrote Hollywood. <laughs> I love that. Uh, do you like when songs, you know, how do you learn to trust that? When a song comes out in 15 minutes, and you say, we've arrived at something, <laughs> how do you know not to keep tinkering with words, with melodies, and just say, no, this is a finished product? Hmm, well, I mean, you know, people weigh in, and your co-writers, or, or Frank, or somebody like that, but, um, you you pretty much, you just kind of know. It's intuitive. Yeah. That's good. Good advice. Um, I'm interested, you mentioned Texas, and I know Texas is a big theme musically for this record. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of gospel, a lot of blues, and some old school country music. Um, it's where you're from, so it's certainly naturally that you arrive there. But tell me about sort of just going straight in that mode. Well, I grew up in East Texas, and... Um, the music field there is just wide open. There's not as many barriers because uh, it's not as much of um, uh, of a business. You know, the labels and stuff are in Nashville, L.A., New York, whatever. And so those people are, like, selling. Like, it's a product, you know. But in Texas, it's more, uh, oh gosh, it's just a way of life, you know. And so there's just all kinds of music there. And so I, we recorded at Sugar Hill Studios, which is uh, mostly rap music is recorded there now, but... The first rap song ever, I believe, was recorded there. Yeah, that's that's what I hear. Yeah. I wasn't there, but <laughs> but that's what I hear. Yeah. So the rap scene's huge, and <clears throat> and um, Willie Nelson had recorded there back in the day. George Jones, my all-time favorite singer, um, cut all of his early hits there. So it was a really cool place, but very eclectic. Just all kinds of music, and and um, they don't like I said, they just don't worry so much about labels in Texas. Um, maybe you can tell me about how intentional it was that you picked returning to record there. I mean, you live in Nashville. Obviously, you've been in the Music City machine for a long time. How did you guys, you and your husband, Frank, who produced this, how did you guys come to that conclusion with that plan? I had, I had always wanted to go to Texas and make a record. Um, logistically, it's a little, you know, it can be a little weird. But um, I just, I, when I grew, when I was growing up in East Texas, um, I knew I wanted to be a country singer from the time I could, you know, walk. And so uh, I, I felt a certain way when I'm there. And every time I go back there, I feel that way again. And it's uh, the whole time I was there, I was on the cusp of something. I had this whole thing ahead of me, you know. And I wanted to feel like that when I was making this record because I knew I had some different things ahead of me. And this was a, a new beginning. And so I wanted to have that feeling. Let's talk about some of that new beginning. You're with a new label, ATO Records. Um, is that 
something at this point in your career, so many millions of records sold, singles sold, chart hits, all these things, like to be back on the cusp of something, how does that feel? It feels really cool, yeah. Um, I had wanted to make a record like this for a long time, and, and um, so I had waited for a while to, to, to be able to just be completely free and, and make uh, record any kind of song I wanted, not worry about what box it was going to fit in or anything like that. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm having more fun than I ever have, and that's kind of weird to say, but <laughs> at this point, after 20 years of being in the business, but I am. Um, on this end of the record, you know, it's a finished product. You've heard it. You love it. Is this something you would do again? Oh, yeah. I'm going to do it again. Only in Texas? <laughs> Are we only recording in Texas from here on? I don't know. I don't know where. I don't, I don't know. And I don't know if it's that important, mm -hmm. uh, but it was important this time because, like I said, I needed to get that energy, right. that this is a new thing energy, and I needed that. Um, you know, I'm interested. Obviously, there's a level of familiarity. Your husband is producing the record. But in the studio, what is your preferred environment? Is it all business? Is it business hours? Or is it more relaxed and you guys like to bat around ideas? Yeah, more relaxed. And I like being away from, like, I don't like going out in the hallway and, and running into a bunch of, you know, business people, sure. uh, industry people. <clears throat> so, um, but very relaxed. I, I like to have somebody, a chef, come in and cook. So we don't have to leave and go eat and come back. And it's just kind of like you can't. You really don't want to run into people. No. I, don't. I never leave my house. That's why they're laughing. I never <laughs> I never go anywhere. Um, I mean, I'm sort of an, a little bit of an introvert, which is weird to say when you do this for a living, but, I, but that's sort of my personality. Um, I'm interested. Do you show up with all songs fully <laughs> finished? You know exactly what they're going to do. Or do you guys sort of like live record and mess with melodies and arrangements? No, I know. And I I know people do it the other way. Like right. they'll just write it as they're in the studio. Oh my gosh, that would make me a nervous wreck. Couldn't do that. I have to know what I'm doing. Um, obviously, Houston has had a hard time lately. There's a lot going on. You've done a lot on your social media to raise awareness about how people can contribute, how they can help, what they can do. What has it been like, especially with a product that is so rooted there, to sort of watch what they've struggled with the last couple of weeks? Well, you know, I, I love Houston. My husband's born there. We have a, a place there, and, and I go there as much as I possibly can because that's the coolest city. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I just, you walk down the street, you don't even hear English spoken. I mean, you hear every other language in the world. It's, it's the coolest place. You're, you're right there by the beach. I could go on and on about how great Houston is, so I hate to see them having any struggles at all. Right. Um, you know, you also brought in Waylon Payne, who you've worked with and known for a few years. He's also from Texas. What was sort of, when you guys all got together, you're in Texas, you're writing, like all these things, like what is the vibe that you were going for? I mean, there's a very, very old school sort of blues mentality to some of these songs. Yeah. I wanted it to be loose and I wanted, I wanted it to feel like we were making music, not making what I call Mick Records. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you want, what kind of toy you want with this? Right. You know, I, I don't, I just, I wanted, I wanted it to feel like a bunch of friends that were making music, and I hope that's what we achieved. Um, let's talk, I think it's probably related to this answer, but your new partnership with ATO Records, what was it that you were looking for at this point in your career when it came to picking a label? Um, a label that wouldn't label me, I guess, right. you know? <laughs> and, and, I mean... I was so used to making music and turning it into a label and having them look at me and go, what do you want us to do with this? What do you think we're going to do with this? You know? And it was so nice to have them look at me and go, we know exactly what to do with this. Awesome. Yeah. Does it feel a little bit weird? I mean, there has been much so, so much made with this record asking about how you came back to Roots music when really your music has been Roots all along. Does it feel a little bit weird to have to explain that at this point? Yeah. Um, my first single that I ever put out to radio was called Never Again Again. It had ch twin fiddles and steel guitars and, you know, just um, a lot of harmony. It was just country, you know. And, and so it's always funny to me when people say she's gone back to her roots. And I've always done this kind of music. But, you know, I've had some crossover success and stuff like that. So I, I get why they say that. But... You know, you, it's, you can't take the country out of this. <laughs> right. um, I love seeing your name in the writing credits, and it does seem like that has waxed and waned at different points over the course of your career. It seems like you've come back a lot to writing, especially with this album. Are you feeling particularly inspired, or is that like an intentional goal you want to re-explore writing more? I was feeling inspired, yeah, to write for this record. Um, um, you know, there's not a lot of... 
songs lying around out there for a traditional, you know, very traditional female artist. So I've, from the beginning, I've kind of had to write a lot of those. Twenty That was 20 years and two husbands ago, and am I the only thing you've done wrong? And right. If these walls could talk, they'd pray. All these real country things, you know, that I wrote. So, um, I, I, but... Nashville has always been a songwriter's town, and there's the greatest writers in the world there. And if you don't tap into that, then, you know, Frank told me one time, he said, if Willie Nelson can cut outside songs, you sure can. Right, exactly. So. <laughs> um, how do you sort of know when a song is, even if it's not from you, enough Leanne Womack? Like, what is it that you look for or relate to in a song? I can't tell you specifically, but I know when I hear it. I, that. I get it. That's something that speaks to my heart, the lyrics, you know, and and then the melody is something I can do something with. And so um, I know it when I hear it. Um, I want to talk about the title of this record, The Lonely, The Lonesome, and The Gone. Uh, There's a lot of sad there. There's a lot of emotions there. Where did it come for you, and how did you know this was the name of this album? You know, I'm not really sure. I was always kind of a lonely little girl. I guess I grew up in such a small town, and I had such big dreams that that made me. Uh, I was involved in everything. You know, I was in Girl Scouts. I was in church stuff. I was d- dance lessons and just all everything. But I was still, I just felt lonely, right. I guess. And so I've always had that sort of spirit about me. Right. And I call myself a loser all the time. And <laughs> and, I, and I mean that. I don't even mean that. In, I don't know, it's terrible to say that about yourself. But I just feel like I'm the underdog and, and that my people are underdogs. And that's who I sing to. Um, and where in the recording process did you say, I know that this is what I want to call this record? Mm. Probably when I heard that title. Really? <laughs> yeah. You knew immediately yeah. that this was going to fit for everything. I like that. Um, country music has <laughs> a long history of sad songs and a long history of loneliness. Um, what about... Used to. Used, yes. Yeah. I was going country, to say this. Real country music still does. Real yeah. country music still does. <laughs> what is it that you think is bringing you back to that, or at this point, like, you have a mature enough perspective to really dig into that in a way? There's a lot of lonely people out there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of people with struggles and things like that, and then they like, you know, they, I know that I like when I hear somebody sing about things like that, uh, I think, well, they felt that way too, right. so maybe I'm going to climb out of this, you know? Do you remember the last time that you found a new artist where you felt that, where you said, oh, I, I feel the same thing that you're feeling. We're having sort of a communion in that. Well, Waylon Payne mm-hmm. is, is one of those. Um, Chris Stapleton right. is one of those. Um, so I, I just like, I like people who, oh, I don't know, make me feel something when I hear them sing. I like that. Um, Chris Stapleton, of course, you recorded a song he wrote called Either Way um, in 2008, I think. And then he recorded it and released it this year. In a weird way, it's a breakup song. Um, It's interesting to get both the male and the female perspective. You can now listen to them back and forth. I wonder what you think about his recorded version and when you found that song. I don't remember when I found it, but I just always loved him. And we were friends for years before Mm -hmm. he came on on the country music scene and... um, his wife, Morgan, sang on the road with me. I don't know if you ever met her when she was out with me, but um, I, I don't remember when I first heard that song, but I know that all, every demo I have of his, and I've got, he's got so many songs from years back that y'all are going to die when you're here, if you ever hear them. They're amazing. So I, I just am a big fan. Um, he obviously has had sort of an unprecedented <laughs> couple of years, you know, breaking through with the music that he makes and the way that it has is there something that you feel now in Nashville or in the industry where you feel like there is sort of like an open road for people who make the music you guys make? I feel like there's a um, a movement, mm-hmm. you know, going on. And I'm glad for that. Yeah. Because my daughter, Aubrey, you know, is not... Uh, Aubrey Sellers, for yeah. anybody who is looking for new music. Aubrey Sellers, yeah. <laughs> She's a new artist. And, and um, she, you know, she... Um, She's one of those that digs a little deeper, too, you know. And so I'm glad for, for the what I feel like is a new movement toward maybe some stuff with a little bit more substance. Right. Um, maybe when she was getting into this industry, was that something you guys had to discuss? You know, that maybe the music that she makes and the music that you make is going to come in periods where it has a watershed moment like a Chris Stapleton. Yeah. And, you know, and I don't ever really have to explain anything to her because she literally grew up, 
you know, in the business on a tour bus and watched every, everything that I've gone through or dad or stepdad, you know, all this stuff. And all of our friends, all of our friends are well, Morgan and Chris. I mean, you know, it's like she's watched everybody. So she, she knows more about the business than I ever did right. when I came to town. And so I don't have to explain a lot of things to her, but we do discuss those kinds of things. Um, to go back to maybe the things that you're looking forward to right now. You just announced a tour. Obviously, you're on the road with Alan Jackson. Uh, you get to see his show every night. But there's also going to be some of your headlining dates where you're going to play this record in full this fall. Maybe you can tell us about those plans. Well, I have a great band. And um, I figured out when I got uh, into these smaller venues, uh, these theaters and stuff where people, they're music lovers, and I can pull out an old traditional gospel song and do it a cappella, and they, they, and they just love that kind of stuff. They want to feel something. Right. And so that's what I'm most looking forward to. I love that. Um, you know, so often when you're an early artist, you really just want to play the big, the big venues, and then you get to the big venues and you miss the small venues and those things like that. How do you, is this the perfect way to balance that, joining both so, sort of size crowds? Yeah, it is. Um, but I, from the minute I started playing theaters, I was like, oh my gosh, it is a joy to play in a room that was built acoustically to play music, right. you know, and not play basketball or something like, or hockey or something, you know. Right. Um, it's just, it feeds, as a musician, it, it just feeds your soul. Is there something different you get out of a live performance versus writing a song? Like, are those two different creative exercises where they reward you in a different way? They are. I don't think it's so much of a difference for an artist like me because I'm not running around jumping up and down on things or, you know, and have fire and all that kind of stuff. I don't have all that. So um, for me, um, it, it's a little more of a... The two worlds are not that different. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great to go out and hear people's stories. You know, this is how this song affected me and actually look at them and look them in the eye and, and hear what they're saying, you know. And so that... That's cool, getting that immediate feedback. Um, at this point right now, before the album's out, I mean, this is not your first record. You've been doing this for a while. Is there something different about each cycle? Is there something different you're looking forward to with this record that maybe you haven't been able to experience in the last several? I call this kind of stuff that's on this record country soul. Mm -hmm. And so um, some great, to me, some great country soul artists were like George Jones, Hank Williams, right. It's kind of a soul singer, you know, Vern Gosden, the, these guys. Um, and so I'm looking forward to kind of marrying all these different kinds of, of music in one in one place. And, and then, you know, there's no denying how country it is, you know, when I'm singing my, right, right. my voice, I mean, the way I pronounce my words and everything. Right, right. <laughs> so, but I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, I always think right now the record is still yours. Only a few people have heard it. You know, there's select times that people get to hear even the songs in advance. Um, when this comes out on October 27th, suddenly there's so many more ears that have tuned in. What do you sort of hope for their listening experience, what they hear when they go through these, I think, 13 songs the first time? I just hope that there's something on there that speaks to them, mm -hmm. you know? Um, got a song called Mama Lost Her Smile about looking back through family photos and somewhere in, you know, in all the years she quit smiling, you know, and so there's just, there's some, some songs in there that, that mean a lot to me. I, I think they'll mean something to somebody else. And so I look forward to hearing, to hearing those people, you know, say that. Yeah. So you look forward to the meet and greets where everybody tells you how that song found their way into their life. Mm -hmm. What has been the most surprising or sort of heartwarming fan interaction that you've had, like with the new music? Oh, with the new music. Well, I'm surprised sometimes that people, um, like if there's somebody that really just likes hardcore traditional country and then they come up and say, I love that, all the trouble. Right. So that's when I start going, okay, I think I'm onto something here. Because, right. you know, you're reaching different audiences with the same thing. And, right. and I, I like to do that. That's awesome. Um, that is all from me. We've got a couple questions from the audience. Uh oh. Hi. <laughs> so you spoke about being a country singer and then getting to do stuff in a different style outside of that box. I was wondering for your songwriting, how early on are you thinking about the style of the song or is that something that comes naturally later? Depends. Sometimes I'll just get a line or a chorus or something like that. Um, or sometimes another writer will bring in, um, like another writer brought in uh, the idea for All the Trouble. And so it kind of it kind of just depends on, on the song. Um, uh, but when you're involved in writing the song, you know, you can kind of direct more uh, how 
the melody would go or how, how you would sing it and how, how it would work for, for me. One we've got one back here. Hi. Um, uh, as a songwriter, uh, having a clear frame of mind and a mentality and being in a good writing environment is very integral. Do you consider yourself someone who likes to say write in a publish publishing house in Nashville or maybe in your home or does it ma does it kind of change with the certain song that you're writing? It does. Well, it can. I mean, I've sat down with Dean Dillon, who you probably heard of, who's one of the greatest country songwriters of all time, in an office and gotten great stuff, you know. But I like to, I like to write late at night. I like to write somewhere else, you know. But, you know, sometimes for, for an artist, you know, it's just time constraints will, will dictate where, when and where you do things. But um, I'm, not, I'm not a staff writer that shows up at 10 o'clock in the morning, gets a cup of coffee, and goes to, you know, I'm, I'm just not, no. <laughs> I'm a cocktail napkin kind of a person when I'm at the bar. I like that. <laughs> and then we've got one more. Hi. Hi. Uh, so I know you were saying, mentioned your daughter is, you know, has been exposed to the music industry growing up. Um, when you were growing up, did you, how supportive were your parents about your music and career? And uh, did you have anybody else like in your family or outside that uh, you kind of look to to support your career? Yeah. Um, nobody's ever asked me that. But my parents were very supportive, thank goodness. And they, I think they would have been no matter what I wanted to do. My dad, though, worked at a country radio station as an on-air personality. And so he, he was sort of you know, in the business that way. Um, and my mom, I sang in church a lot, and and uh, that made her happy. And so, uh, they but they were real supportive. That's awesome. That's all we've got for today. The Lonely, the Lonesome, and the Gone is available for pre-order and out October twenty seventh. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Thank y'all for coming.